What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm doing a deck that I haven't done in so long but I feel like um, when I was initially growing the channel this is a deck that I did a lot and that deck is uh, Yosenju. Uh, Yosenju is one of those decks that's like near and dear to my heart when I first started playing the game I just randomly got into this deck and uh, I don't know I always thought it was cool so uh, I'm profiling it again. This is uh, supposed to be built post Sayak so all the cards that you guys are going to see in here is uh, essentially here to beat Super Heavy Samurai purely uh, Kashtura as well uh, to a certain degree, right? Um, and again, this is pre ban list. We don't know when we're going to get the ban list out, but uh, yeah, it is still post Sayak. So if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure to like and subscribe. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers. With that being said, uh, let's get right into the deck profile here. So uh, we're starting off with the Yosenju cards over here. And for the Yosenjus, we're playing 3, 1, 3, 2, and 3, 3, as well as 2 Yosenju Sujik. So I actually really like these ratios. I don't like the Izna and I don't like all those other names because those names don't do anything for you. There's something that people always like to say in my comments, like, why don't you play these cards? It's because they're so situational. These are the best ones for you. They all summon each other out, uh, other than Sujik, right? But Sujik is a different story. These all summon each other's out. This gets you to another name. This is really good actually to go into time because you can attack directly, which is kind of nice. And this balances cards your opponent controls, which is really powerful, synergizes with other cards you have in your deck. Um, and then Sujik is really nice because you're gonna summon this last. So one will summon two, two will summon three, or like they will all summon each other. And then after you summon all of them, the last one is always gonna summon Sujik. Sujik can boost any of these by a thousand. Um, so it's really nice in that sense. So I really like these ratios. I wouldn't change these up whatsoever. I think that's the best uh, Yosenju ratios. Uh, and then we're playing uh, three Kaijus, uh, three Alpha, and three Fenrir. So these are kind of like some of your going second cards to push for damage. The thing with this deck is it does a lot of poke damage, but it's really actually hard to push for game a lot of the time. So the nice thing with these cards is this is going to help you break boards, of course, but then this is going to put a body on your side of the, or your opponent's side of the field, I should say, that then you can summon like your Alpha. You could also summon Fenrir going first if you're forced to go first by any means, uh, but going second, of course, Alpha in the battle phase is really powerful as well. Oh, not Alpha, sorry, Fenrir. Um, is in the battle phase really powerful as well. So these cards are essentially help you to push for more damage. Uh, this is help you to break boards. And then the Yosenju monsters we all know are really good in their own ways. They also help you make rank fours, which is really nice. So that's it for our monsters that are like actual monsters. Next are the hand traps, which are still technically monsters, but uh, they're mostly hand traps. So we're playing three Ash of course, uh, three Jewel and Lockbird. This deck can play Shifter, which is insane because all of your Yosenju monsters get bounced back to your hand on the end phase, which is really, really powerful. So you're never gonna lose to Shifter, which is really, really nice. On top of that, this just hurts so many meta decks and then being able to activate Shifter and then Kaiju your opponent is kind of insane sometimes too. So uh, three Shifter, of course, and then of course, three Imperm as well for our last hand trap. Uh, these hand traps are all really, really good in this deck. You don't lose any of them. Another one you could argue playing is uh, Nibiru, but I actually don't like playing Nibiru just because I don't think it's as powerful this format because again All your Yusenjus are gonna bounce back to your hand So you can easily play Nibiru and on your turn on your opponent's turn. It's always gonna be live But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just feel like Nibiru is not as powerful as these ones in today's format So that's why we're just playing these I think that's 12 hand traps and then including the Kaijus That's 15 cards to go second and break boards, which is really nice uh, Then for our like consistency, we're playing three Xtrav so I like uh, Extrav over Prosperity because it, that, I, like, it's not even about Prosperity making like your attack or your damage half. Uh, this deck's not always going to be OTKing anyways. I mean, it can OTK, which is nice because uh, you'll do a lot of poke damage and then if you have the Alpha or the Fenrir, and then this deck makes Cowboy really, really easily. Um, there's times I've made double Cowboy for game, which is actually kind of crazy. But the reason I like Extrav is because with this deck, you really want to see more cards and it's really important to see more Yosenju names uh, and more board breakers. And so that's why I chose to go extravagance. Also, you're never really going into your extra deck anyways in this deck. So uh, you could play Prosperity easily. I just think Extrav just makes a little bit more sense in this deck. You want more cards, right? So again, this could be Extrav. This could be uh, Prosperity. Either way, it's still pretty powerful. Then we're playing three Tenki. All of your essential monsters are Beast Warrior. So Tenki is really nice in that sense. And you guys can argue, it's like, oh, but Spanko, if you go Tenki, Droll is so important in today's format. Then your opponent Droll's you. It's like, okay, but I'm not searching. Like literally as soon as I see a couple names, that I don't care, right? So I need to see the names and that's why Tenki is really important. And then lastly, we're just playing one Harpies and one Called By just because there's so many hand traps relevant and then Harpy is also really good going first uh, or second, I should say, into back row because uh, you don't have a lot of back row hate in this deck. So that's it for the main deck. It's 40 cards in the main deck. Uh, for the extra deck here, I'm not going to go super in-depth because it's all just rank 4 toolbox. We're playing 2 Cowboy because we're playing Extrav, so you want to play 2 Cowboys. It's really powerful to play 2. This card, a lot of time, you can go for game with this card, so that's really nice. Um, and then again, again, it's just rank 4 toolbox. Steel Swarm Roach, Dweller, Exiton Knight, Emerald for if your Yosenjus go to the graveyard. Uh, Chidori is really nice because your Yosenju monsters all win, so Chidori is powerful. Uh, Tornado Dragon, Dugaris, Baguska. 
Again, just all toolbox rank four monsters that are all just really powerful in their own. And then we're playing a little um, Zeus package. So we're playing Borbo Chakanine. You don't even have to use these to go into Zeus. Obviously you can use any of your other Ixies monsters, but this is kind of a thing where it's kind of like, okay, I need to end on Zeus. Zeus just wins me the game here. So I go into these and then uh, then I can go into the Zeus, right? And we're playing two Zeus, of course, for Kosh there. You don't want to lose to uh, that also for Extravagance, right? So we're playing two. And then the only link monster we play is Underworld Goddess. Underworld Goddess is really powerful because Yosenju monsters can typically spam the board really easily. So if you get four Yosenju monsters and your opponent has a monster you can't otherwise out, I know something right now, for example, is Chaos Angel. That card is absolutely busted. So this card just kind of outs it. And then any other, you know, towers like monsters that you can't out underworld goddess outs it for you so um that's it for the extra deck i think it's all pretty self-explanatory nothing super relevant there that's uh you know important in the sense of like you need to be playing this and then lastly i'm going to show you guys a side deck and i think this side deck is really powerful just for today's format and again your side deck is going to always be built based off of your locals but uh one hand trap that i'm not playing in the main deck that's also really powerful is ogre so i like three ogre um, three Lightning Storm for going second as well. These are the only cards I want to play going second because the deck already plays so many cards going second. So for that reason, it's kind of like, I, I don't want to max out on cards going second here. I just, I want to have a few other options for back row and then for matchups where this is really good. And then there's some matchups, for example, that Shifter is not really good into wherever Shifter is, right? So that's why I'm playing the Ogre instead. So um, yeah, that's the only reason I'm playing those go second cards. The rest of the cards are going first because I know sometimes your opponent's going to make you go first and you want to be prepared for that. I think Barrier is really good into Mana Dome, really good into Purely, you call Ixies, you call Synchro, you call Fusion into Branded. Uh, this card is really, really powerful. Uh, three Anti-Spell, if you guys saw, the only spells we're playing in the main deck are Extrav and Tenki, and then Harpies, of course, but well, I'm not counting the one-ups, right? The main ones are Extrav and Tenki, and being able to go Anti-Spell going first into so many decks is just absolutely busted. So I really like three Anti-Spell, and then lastly, I like three Judgment. I think Judgment just always makes sense if you're deciding to go first, because... Um, there's just so many things that you can judgment in this game that are just so powerful and so impactful. So uh, yeah, again, if you can set up a judgment with like a Baguska into Branded, right? Like if, if you know you're going up against Branded and you go Baguska and Judgment set, like that's all you need because on your next turn, you, you're going to follow up with like a Baguska attack. If you don't have more Yosenjus in your hand, you can Baguska attack, make Zeus, and then you're just winning the game from there. So um, that's why I just, I really like the side deck. And again, you're always going to side based off of uh, what your locals is like. So if your locals is no branded like you have no branded players and don't side to, for branded right kind of thing so again this is just kind of a side deck i kind of wanted to show you guys but the main thing that i really wanted to show you guys is uh yosenju and i think it's really powerful because this is one of those decks that can play a lot of hand traps and it doesn't really lose super hard to the hand traps that are relevant in today's format again all the yosenju monsters they summon the, they activate their effects to get an extra normal summon right so ash is not really good into the yosenju monsters droll is not really good shifter is not really good so all of these really important hand traps in today's format are not actually really that good into this deck the only hand trap that really kills this deck is like Veiler and Perm. I think Super Heavy is playing Veiler, of course, because, you know, they have to play all monsters, but a lot of decks aren't on Veiler and Imperm as much anymore. So for that reason, it's kind of like the Yosenju monsters are more or less safe. But that's it for the deck profile. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you, Alpha, for filming. Thank you for letting me use uh, the house to uh, get these deck profiles in for you guys so you guys can see all these profiles. But uh, yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, if you guys have any suggestions. So one thing I always like to do with Yosenju is because it's a deck that... Um, I know I get a lot of comments on. If you guys have suggestions, always let me know in the comment section down below. That's how we get better together as a community. And I think that's really important, right? Bringing the community together and, and learning from each other. I think really nice. So thank you guys all for watching. I really do appreciate every single one of you. Um, we're almost at 10K. So make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. And with that, thank you.